is a wooden sign that sits in the window of our church kitchen, right above the sink. And it says, blessed are they who clean up. I have no idea how long it's been there or who might have put it there, but whoever it was, I'm sure that person was heavily involved in the business of cleaning up. And I have to say, I agree with these words, blessed are they who clean up. But does that mean that they who linger at the table to finish a good conversation are not blessed? Well, in the season of entertaining, those who find themselves stuck in the kitchen might sometimes be heard not blessing, but cursing those who are content to go through food and dishes without getting up to help. I wonder what Jesus would say about this. We actually have an idea, thanks to St. Luke, who wrote about a time when Jesus went to dinner at a friend's house. In chapter 10, starting with verse 38, Luke picks up Jesus' travel story with this little anecdote. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. And every lazy Mary, since time immemorial, does a fist pump, while the Marthas of the world, including the one who hung this sign in our kitchen, hang their heads discouraged. Have they really missed the point? Were all those acts of service for naught? People have serious issues with this story, and for good reason. I mean, who's going to do the dirty work if everyone is sitting in quiet contemplation all the blessed time? As a friend of mine once said, I kind of wish the Lord had not been so dismissive about the caregiver's chores. The story seems to reward the irresponsible shirking of one's duties while criticizing those who put the food on the table, the essential workers, as it were. But maybe we're not hearing it as it was intended. Maybe we need to hear the tenderness in Jesus' voice as he called Martha by name twice, not to call her out, but to call her in. Martha, Martha, I see you, how worried you are, how heavily burdened by many things. Martha, Martha, you are working yourself to death. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her, nor will it be taken away from you, Martha, should you choose it, he might have added, for this sounds to me like Jesus is inviting Martha to consider the question, what would be the better part for you right now? Sometimes there is need of only one thing. What was the one thing Martha needed in that moment? To finish the dinner prep? To take a break? We don't know, but I hear Jesus ever so gently giving her permission to choose, to choose the better part for herself in that moment. As for her sister Mary, she had made her choice, stepped away from the chores and taken a break to sit next to Jesus. Bellies would be filled in due time, Mary needed to fill her heart and soul with the kind of sustenance that only Jesus could give. That was the one thing she needed in that moment. And bless her for showing us how it works, that sometimes you need to be busy, and sometimes you just need to be. I do assume that Mary eventually did her share of the work, pulled the bread out of the oven and seasoned the soup, and I also trust that she finished that work with renewed energy after having taken her time to fill her spiritual cup with the living water of Jesus' word. And I also hope that Martha herself learned something from Jesus that day, maybe even two things. First, not to equate self-worth with productivity. And second, not to estimate other people's worth by our assumption of their productivity. We all have different needs for work and rest. You take one shift and I'll take the other. And by the way, your work may not look the same as mine. Your passion for one particular cause might drive you to invest great amounts of time in a certain type of work, but others may feel called to other causes equally important in their way. 
Martha was quick to judge Mary for stepping away from the housework because that was the only thing she could focus on, distracted by her mental list of what needed to be done to receive their guests. Hear her complain to her guest of honor, my sister has left me to do all the work by myself. Oh, how my heart does go out to Martha because I absolutely know the feeling. Company is coming, company is here, and you'll never have the house the way you want it. And if that sort of thing is important to you, it can feel stressful. And I think it's fair to suppose that Jesus hadn't texted Martha a heads up. He was on his way. He sort of just showed up with an entourage and poor Martha had to scurry to put on a party. Of course she was distracted by many things. The laundry she had left hanging up awkwardly, the bread dough she needed to mix up extra, maybe a few chickens to catch up, kill and prepare. In those days, having surprise company wasn't as easy as calling in some pizzas. Martha can be forgiven for being distracted by many things. Any of us probably would have been too. But isn't it also important, once guests have arrived, to step away from the busy work and make them feel welcome, to build relationship, to listen to their stories, to laugh and relax together? When someone dear to us takes the time to be with us, wouldn't we agree that in that moment, there is need of only one thing. Mary had chosen the better part to offer her full attention to her beloved guest, to be present with him, undistracted by the many tasks, most of which she had clearly determined could wait for at least a little while. This story has often been used to solidify stereotypes, dividing people into the categories of Martha's and Mary's, names which have become code to describe the ones who are always busy behind the scenes versus the ones who embody calm presence and each side judging the other right as either too concerned with the cares of the world or too heavenly minded to be any earthly good but i don't see the martha and mary story as an either or scenario i think we're designed to find the balance between doing and being work and rest puttering and praying it is built into God's design for us, is it not? We tire so that we can rest. The sun sets so we may clo close our eyes against the darkness and we wake to each bright new day, ready for more of the business of living, which includes work, but also play and prayer and presence. Presence with one another and with the divine which we may encounter within each other if we can slow down enough to see it. To my friend who lamented how dismissive our Lord seemed of the caregivers, I would say, no, our Lord Jesus had the highest regard for the caregivers. For just before entering the home of these two sisters, he had told the parable of the Good Samaritan, showing that the way to abundant life was to show mercy to care for others' needs. Go and do likewise, he had said. And then, he met a careworn woman who was burning the candle at both ends, her work never finished. And he invited her to consider self-care as another trait worthy of his disciples. Her sister had chosen in that moment what he called the better part. He might have also whispered in the voice meant for Martha's ears alone, go and do likewise. There is a time to be busy and there is a time to be. Martha, Martha, which will it be? What is the better part for you right now? Now that you have listened without worry or distraction to this teaching of Jesus Christ our Lord, can you hear him inviting you too? Yes, you, calling you by name, maybe even twice. How do you respond to the call to care for others? And how do you balance that with the call to care for your own spiritual needs? For the trap has been exposed. It is not an either or situation. You do not need to identify as the Martha or the Mary. You too have been called to live as both, to take up the work ethic of a compassionate disciple and the spiritual practice of one who knows when to be still and know. This is a story that can help us to find a balance, to step into the fullness of our identity as beloved children of God and to allow others to find their balance too for we are all blessed, whether we are the ones cleaning up or the ones savoring a longer conversation. I think maybe I need to redo this sign. I think it needs to say, blessed are they who take turns. Know when to be busy and know when to be. It's all in the balance. 